So the first step is to actually create a new company. What I usually recommend is creating a template company, uh, which means sort of like a blank, a blank company um, that has all of the configuration enabled. So it's essentially all the master data, chart of accounts, dimensions, um, reports, um, you know, posting setup and all that is, is configured. Um, and it does, but it doesn't have any transactions. So you can, it makes for creating new companies easier. You just copy that template. Um, so step one would be to create a new company to create new company. And you'll usually do, uh, pr uh, production and setup only. You, you don't need sample data. That's like Kronos. So you do, uh, setup only. And then from there, you're going to want to copy, uh, your master data in. So you would do that through a configuration package, um, which basically you, you take your, your, your current company and download all of the pertinent tables. So chart, like I said, chart of accounts, um, accounting periods, account schedules, um, and uh, basically we've got a configuration package. You can reach out to us and we can send that over to you, um, or we can actually create the company for you. But the idea is you use a configuration package to download all your master data from your, your current company and then import it into the new template. Again, you can reach out to us uh, for any kind of help with, with that. That's the hardest part. <clears throat> Once you have your template uh, ready, you create a copy of that template, um, that template company and rename it, you know, subsidiary to, or whatever your, your new company is. So that's creating your new company. Um, you might want to create a test company and just uh, post some transactions there before you go live with it. Um, and then uh, otherwise you've got a company ready to go. And once you have now your two companies, you're going to want to go and uh, create a, a parent company. So just like you, let's say this is your first time consolidating. You, you, you've had a, uh, uh, one company up until this point. So you create your new subsidiary. You'll also create a new parent company at the same time using that template company. Uh, so you copy that and, and call it consolidation or parent within that parent company, you would then have to define the consolidation uh, roll up. Um, so that is done in the business unit page. Um, you can have multiple layers of consolidation. So there could be, you know, an international subsidiary based in, in Hong Kong or, or China or India, wherever you're, or whatever you have, say one layer of consolidation and then you can consolidate that set of subsidiaries and then maybe you have a second layer which goes up into the corporate office and, and the total total company that's sort of a second layer or second uh, consolidation step within each each consolidation company you define who the, the subsidiaries are of that so let's say in this case um i'm in the chronos 2 company so i'll pick abc And, uh, then I'll add another one. We'll do Chrome. We'll do, uh, my company. And if it's fully owned, you'll consolidate a hundred percent of it, which is pretty typical. If it's minority or majority, or majority owned, uh, but not hundred percent, you can set the consolidation percent. Um, if it's a, if all companies are using the same functional currency, so let's say they're all using us dollar as the subsidiaries functional currency, that's the functional currency would be the local currency value established right here. Um, this is your functional currency. If 
all the functional currencies is set, are the same, you're not going to be doing a, uh, a remeasurement, uh, um, a re remeasurement of the uh, a revaluation of the balance sheet into cumulative translation adjustment and equity. Um, you would leave all the currency codes blank. If that particular subsidiary has a functional currency different than the parent, then you'll have to pick the currency that it is in and also specify your exchange rate gains and losses accounts. So uh, if, if they're all the same currency, not something you need to worry about, but if it is, uh, they are different, then you need to go ahead and specify those currencies. Once you have your subsidiary set, um, you're ready to consolidate. So you can actually run the consolidation, uh, but first you'll want to enter the exchange rates. You'll, you'll enter the average rate for the month. If it's a, if you have, if there's a currency code here. So if a subsidiary is in a currency code other than uh, the parent, then you'll have to enter the average and ending rates for that. Um, it's not, it doesn't link to the currency pages. So uh, the currency page is more for transactions. So this, this is used for transactions within a company. And so if you have, say AP or AR in a different currency or a bank account, then you would you would book invoices or payments um, in a separate currency. That's at a transaction level. This is at a consolidation level. So uh, you use, it's a different place to enter the rates. Once the rates are entered, then you're ready to run the consolidation. And you would do that um, each month. <clears throat> and you can do it multiple times a period. Uh, it will essentially reverse out the prior consolidation and rebook, you know, uh, all the entries booked in the subsidiaries to date. So if you, if you have an adjustment entry that you booked a little late or, or you want to run consolidation multiple times throughout close for your financial reports, that's not a problem. You can just rerun it each time. <clears throat> After that, your consolidation is run. There's a few reports that are useful. Um, most of your account schedules, let's say all of your account schedules, you're going to want to run them in your parent company, obviously for uh, when you're running consolidated reports. Um, first, you might write, might want to run a consolidation trial balance. I like this one. If you have fewer than three subsidiaries, this one works well. It creates a, a trial balance column for each, each of the, um, each of the subsidiaries and then the eliminations. Um, it's a nice trial balance report. I mentioned eliminations. That's one other thing to consider. Uh, there's not a separate elimination company. You book any eliminations within the parent company. So that the company that you ran the consolidation in, that's where you would book eliminations for your intercompany AR, AP, revenue costs. Um, directly as a journal entry, just like you would in any other company. Um, you book a journal entry, so you zero out those intercompany balances. Also on reporting uh, account schedules. So uh, within the column layouts, if you recall, account schedules have a set of rows that show the calculation for what each row means. Columns uh, specify what each column is. So at the intersection of whatever you define that particular column and that row will give you a value. Most of the time, the columns are dates. It's January, February, March, or quarter one, quarter two, quarter three. Um, you can also do them by business unit. So you can grab in a business unit or, or dimension um, as well. So instead of, instead of uh, saying this column is for January, this column is for February, you might say this whole report is for year to date and this column is for ABC company and this column is for MCY and then leave a blank. That would be for total. So uh, you might say ABC co um, my company consolidated. So that's another way uh, to run reports by company. Um, the third way is to, uh, um, combine them in a, an O data source. 
Um, so you can, uh, in Power BI or Excel, you can combine multiple companies into one query. So you can, for example, run a trial balance. Um, uh, you can run a trial balance for all subsidiaries and the parent company and have it, have it return with separate company names. Um, they're kind of think of them as sort of stacked queries. You can, you can append multiple, uh, data sources together for multiple companies and create pivot tables or other reports in Excel or Power BI, um, where the actual company code is a column value. And then you can slice and dice based on that company. Uh, for more detail on that, they're, they're uh, going to do another blog post on how to actually create this query uh, for multiple companies. So check that out. And then Jet Reports also works well. That's, I'd say, another a fourth option. Uh, Jet Reports is a third party tool, third party license uh, that you can purchase that um, also lets you create Excel reports by company. So it's a, it's a great tool to, to run consolidations if you start to get uh, have, have to have a lot of companies. Um, it's a tool to look into.